Thank you for tuning in. I'm Lewis Lee with the First African Baptist Church located here in Goldsboro, North Carolina, where our theme is encouraging hearts, changing lives, and saving souls. God is truly a great God. He's worthy to be praised. He's the greatest of all because he's the author and the finisher of our faith. And this is the time to truly be excited about the wonderful working of our Lord. We have no option but to be excited about the wonderful things of God. For if it had not been for the Lord that was truly on our side, the testimony still rings true. Where would I be today? We're picking up in our Bible in Acts the 16th chapter, and we read last week where Paul and Silas had left the house of Lydia, and they were fresh on that missionary journey, and they had preached the word of God, and the young damsel that was all of her life was struggling and used for value purposes all of her life. She was used to tell fortune so that the men could go into the city and make money off of her all of her life. Her value and her worth was based upon how they could make the most economically out of the demon that lived on the inside of her. And just one word from Paul and Silas, and God gave them a word and they commanded that that demon come out of her because who she is is not being represented. And many times in life when we deal with people, we're, we're not talking to the person, but it's the demon on the inside. It's that, that, that movement on the inside of that person. And once the Holy Spirit comes in and it cleans up, then we can begin to negotiate and discuss the wonderful things of God. This young lady's life was set free. Her soul was restored. Lydia's purpose was also restored also because Lydia invited the these men into her house with her family and said, listen, you preached the gospel and I got saved. I went back home and told my family about everything that you told me and my family got saved. The word of God even records my nationality and now a whole new region of people are going to be led to Christ because the gospel has now come first to the Jews, then to the Gentiles in Judea and Samaria and I'm part of that uttermost parts of the world and the gospel is being spread. And so when this word got out, Everybody around, they brought in Paul and Silas and they beat them and they scourged them and they locked them up. There was no trial. I guess they had gotten accustomed to kangaroo court. There was no attorney or there was no district attorney. There was no movement. There was no judgment calls. It was, you, we think you're guilty. They locked them up. They beat them. But these boys got to praising God in the midnight hour. And have you ever heard of an on-time God? Well, leading up to this text, we see the power of an on-time God because when they began to pray and to celebrate God and to celebrate all the wonderful things that God has done, when they began to rejoice in that midnight hour, yes, those stripes hurt, but they were praising God anyway. Yes, the inflation felt like it was borderline criminal, but yes, they were praising God anyway. Yes, they were robbed when they stopped at the gas pump and gas $4.38 a gallon, but they praised God anyway. And in the midnight hour, God sent down the power and he began to speak to the elements. He spoke to the platelets in the earth. He spoke to the diamond and the granite and the uranium and the zinc and the mercury. And he said, listen, guys, I need you to do something for me. Shake open the jail. And, you know, those elements and those rocks were standing by because the Bible says that if we don't praise God, he'll command the rocks to crowd and praise him. So God told those rocks, he said, I got some folks praying in me right now. I, I got some retired people that are still on fire for the Lord. I got some poor people that still know that they're rich in spirit. I got some folks with medical situations that know that their healing is on the way. I got somebody that'll praise and lift up his holy name. I got that child that's been rejected that know that they're somebody in God's kingdom. I got that person that's been battered and bruised and looked over all of their life and now they finally realize that I'm wonderfully and fearfully created in the presence of 
Jesus. And so all of these said, I got somebody that'll worship. I got somebody that in the midst of this dark world where chaos is all throughout the world, there is a man goes into a church in California, open up fire. There's another man that goes into the supermarket and hunts down folks by the color of their skin. And God said, how do we put together the pieces of life? How do we move forward when something so treacherous and bad has happened? And then he said the answer is to praise God and worship in advance. Worship him because somebody knew the Lord and they met their Savior that day. Worship him because this gives us an opportunity to speak truth over situations and maybe someone's heart now can see the problem when happens when we teach racism in our homes, when we teach bigotry in our schools, when we teach that in our lives, when we fail to operate with open hearts that'll give people decent common respect and courtesy, maybe somebody can be changed so that this what, what was a big tragedy can avoid a future even larger tragedy that we may deal with in the world. So God said, I got folks that will praise me. And just like Paul and Silas were praising his name, he sent forth and the rocks and the atmosphere got busy and they opened up the gates and these boys were let out of prison and all of the gates and the, the, the jailer there said, I, I got to do something. He took out his sword to kill himself. It's in the earlier part of the chapter. And while he was taking out his sword, Paul said, hold it, man. We right here. And that brings us to where we are today. And it says that, and they said, believe on this Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. That's verse 31. That's what Paul and Silas said to the jailer. And then in Acts 16, 32, it says, And they spake unto him the words of the Lord, and to all his house, when his house. And he took them the same hour of the night, and washed their stripes, and was baptized in all his straight way. And when he had brought them into his house, he set meat before them and rejoiced, believing God with all of his house. And when it was day, the majesty sent the sergeant saying, let those men go. And the keeper of the prison told the saying that Paul, the magistrates, had sent to let you go. Now therefore depart and go in peace. But Paul said unto him, they have beaten us openly, uncondemned, being Romans, and have cast us into prison, and now they thrust us out privately. No, 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 verily, he said, but let them come themselves and fetch us out. If you're such a bad boy and you feel like you're going to throw the men of God out of, out of this place, you come fetch us out. And the sergeant told these words unto the magistrate, and they feared. And when they heard that they were Romans, and they came and besought them and brought them out and desired them to depart out of the city. And they went out of the prison and entered into the house of Lydia. And when they had seen the brethren, they comforted them and departed. Can you see the power of what's going on? These guys' stripes only made them better. And the stripes that we deal with in life, the problems that we go through in life, they're only in our lives to make us better. Today, think about it. It's by my stripes that I am made better. LaShawn Pace Rose wrote a song in the late 80s. And the songwriter said, if I was in control of my life, the heartaches, the pains, and of these things, my life would be scot-free. But that just goes to show how little I know about leading and controlling because all these things worked out to make the best of me. Lord, help us today. Help someone to receive your word that someone's life may be fortified by the preaching of your gospel. It's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. My stripes make me better. Now, it's clear that these guys had experienced the movement of God. There is no doubt that God rained down from glory. And when he commanded that the jail doors be opened, and not only did he command it, and see, God doesn't operate in miracles to show that we're bigger or better. 
but God's miracles are given so that mankind might be redeemed and saved. You are a living miracle if your testimony is that I shouldn't be here today. Well, God kept you here today because God has value in your life. God kept you here today because there is a story that God has that somebody around you need to see it in your life and know that he's real. God has provided for you today so that we can share the goodness of God and let the world know that God is an on time God and a way making God. And the same was moving here when they sent the word and they heard that the jailer that you placed out there to watch over Paul with his life on the line and silence, that jailer not only was ready to kill himself, but they stopped him from killing himself. And don't you know they told that jailer the same stuff that they were preaching out there in that city? And that jailer got saved, took them boys back home, fed them steak and mashed potatoes and gravy, and their family got saved. And now all of a sudden, they're all rejoicing about the goodness of the Lord. And Paul and Silas are still in this city, and they're preaching. And magistrates, what are we going to do? do. Magistrates began to fear and they sent it down and said, tell Paul and Silas to go on now. Tell them to leave now. They've done what they need to do. Get on out of town. And look at Paul. Can't you see it now? Early on in the text, the early church was running from city to city, fearing for their lives. Early in the early church, they were trying to hide, just keeping away as many were out there committing major crimes against those that would lift up the name of Jesus. They had empirical evidence that came out of the very mouth of Christ that if any man shall follow him, he shall suffer persecution. But it was by those stripes that Paul and Silas realized that even when this body is attacked, it does not diminish the power of what God is about to do. Paul and Silas began to gain some boldness in life where they told the man, they sent it back and said, listen, I spent a night in jail. It didn't kill me. I took your beatings out there in the streets. They did not destroy me. I saw you spitting on me and not wanting to deal with me because of the color of my skin or the neighborhood that I came from. That didn't break me. He said, listen, we're not going anywhere. We're going to stand on God's word. We're going to preach the word of God. Oh, how powerful this movement is and this message is to any preacher out there that's afraid to lift up the name of Jesus. Any family member that's afraid to witness to your family and tell them about the goodness of Jesus. Anybody that's ashamed and scared to tell your neighbors that the Lord Jesus is real. Anybody that's fearful on your job wondering if things are going to work out when God has said he will provide. Paul said you tell that majesty that if he want us to leave and stop preaching the name of Jesus he bring himself down here and fetch us out. Not only does our stripes give us and present us where we can deal with challenges but it also gets a level of confidence when Paul said I, I know who my God is and I know what God will do. You know, your bars, they can't hold me if the Lord say it's time to be free. Your stripes cannot destroy me if the Lord say that I'm going to be healed. That cancer cannot ruin my body if God said I got more life. That heartache in this financial situation can't put me in the poor house when my God said that he will provide according to his riches and glory. So when Paul said, come down here and fetch us out and send us out the city, and look at how the tables have turned. The magistrates all of a sudden, they thought they were putting fear inside of Paul and Silas. But when you've been battle tested, you know what you can stand. When you've been battle tested, you know how many stripes the body can handle. When you've been battle tested, you know that you can rebound and you understand the difference that another day make when you've been battle tested. You know that I've come a long way by faith, leaning on the everlasting word of the Lord, trusting in his holy word. And as the songwriter said, he's never failed me yet when you've been battle tested. You know you got strength for the journey that'll carry you from this day forward and keep you going when you've been battle tested. You you know that you can look to the hills from which cometh your help and know that your help come from the most high God up high. And so when the magistrate said, 
get him out of town. Paul said, you come and you fetch us out. And then they heard that word. These boys finally said, let's go back to Lydia. And they walked out of town with their heads held high. They walked out of town still preaching and teaching the word of God. They walked out of town celebrating and encouraging new saints that had been born again and bought with a price. They walked out of town knowing that God showed sure enough will make a way. They walked out of town saying no matter what come in my direction, I'm going to trust in the name of the Lord. They walked out of town knowing that God is the author. He's the finisher. He's the alpha. He's the omega. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the everlasting father. He's the everything. They walked out of town with a brand new confidence because they clearly understood that their stripes and all the things they endured only made them stronger and bolder for the Lord. Oftentimes we ask questions. Why did God allow this to happen? Without realizing that God loves us and even in the midst of our wrong, he sends compassion to the victim and he still provides forgiveness to the offender because his love never fails. Why did I have to go through what I went through? And all the while, God knows just how much we can take. And he's building us and he's building up blocks and making us stronger so that we can be more effective for God. Why do it feel like I've been lost and I'm all alone? Maybe God has more confidence in you than you ever had in yourself. And God said, I don't need to sit there and babysit that brother. That brother's going to put that bottle down and he's going to rise up in the name of Jesus. I don't have to babysit that sister. She knows what she has to do and she got courage on the inside and she can make it. God is looking out at your life and saying, you don't have to live that way anymore. I know that you can do it. I got plans for you. I got strength inside of you. And God said, it looks like I left you alone because I knew that by my spirit and your desire and my power and your faith, you could get up from where you are and be all that God would have you to be. Because all the things we go through, God sent us all these stripes in our lives and they only come to make us stronger. Maybe you feel like you've been going through stuff unnecessary. Well, the good news is Jesus Christ brought you to this day. This is your special day. This is your special hour. All the stripes that you've endured in life, whether they were self-inflicted or whether they were circumstances of where you were or the product of your environment, the good news is Jesus Christ paid the price so that we could be forgiven. And no matter what we've been through or no matter what we've done, Today we can start with a brand new life where our past only makes us stronger and our sins will be forgiven. And how do we get that status? By accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. If you're listening today, whether you're listening in real time on Sunday, the fourth Sunday in May 2022, or you're listening to this program later, if you're listening today and God is speaking to your heart, and you know that all the things you've been through, it's time for life to change. Well, the good news is God brought you to this moment because today he wants to give you a brand new start on life. And how do I receive this start? The first thing is thanking God for giving you the opportunity to hear his word. Secondly, God loves each and every one of us. And all of us have sinned against God. All of us have done something wrong. But God loved us so much that he died on the cross so that we could be forgiven. John 3.16 said, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believeth him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. So today, simply pray with me and, and thank Jesus for paying the price for your sins. Ask him for his forgiveness and ask him to become savior of your life. And God has promised, just like I just quoted in John 3, 16, that today he will set you free and he will become your savior. And you no longer will carry the status of a wounded and battled person. But from this day forward, you can be a born again Christian 
and all the stripes you've endured are only brought you to this point to make you stronger. Let us pray. Dear Lord, thank you for dying on the cross for my sins. I ask you, Lord, to forgive me. And I ask you, Lord, to come into my heart and be my savior. Thank you, Lord, for saving my soul. It's in the wonderful name of Jesus the Christ I pray. Amen. If you prayed that prayer for the first time and this is the first time you've connected your heart to Jesus, please reach out to someone in your family that's living the Christian testimony that you've grown to respect. God has already prepared their hearts to receive you. If there's no one in your family, feel free to email us at the email address listed on the bottom of this channel and I will reach out to you personally so that we can help you grow and be all that God would have you to be. Thank you so much for tuning in. See you next week. May God bless you.